For millennia, the people of the Columbia River Plateau supported a robust culture based on salmon and trading. The advent of explorers signaled the beginning of change. And by the late 1850s, the majority of the Plateau tribes were moved to reservations. What might have been the end of Plateau culture instead brought forth the beginning of a new tradition. Out of the upheaval, pictorial beadwork arose, a new way to keep the spirit alive. Art has always been a way to, to showcase what was going on within a community. We totally have adapted beads to being our art farm, even though it you know, hadn't been there before outside of the shell beads, but it's definitely ours and it's definitely a part of our identity. It's gonna be, you know, mine throughout my lifetime and for my grandchildren, it's definitely gonna be a part of their identity for their lifetime. Her dress was made by her great, great grandma, Susie <laughs> Williams. When parents or grandparents put work into their beadwork, it's all out of love. They care about the person that they're making it for. And that's why it, they're handed down from generation to generation. When you hear the sound of the parade, you can hear the sound of the horse moving. There's bells and, and there's, there's sights and sounds. The fringe is, is moving. And so it's a kind of a full experience Sometimes it's such an important thing to bring out one of these dresses, old dressers, or old shirts, or war bonnets, that it can even elicit very great emotion amongst the people, make them cry, because it represents that person, it represents the old people. And so when we bring these things out, it's no small thing amongst our people. It's a very important occasion. My dress is over 100 years old. It was worn by my great-great-grandma, Anna Wannessy, and it was passed down to my grandmother, Mitzi Rodriguez, and she then passed it down to me for me to wear for the beauty pageant. The Yakima, Nesperus, Umatilla, Warm Springs, these places were, were very important for us to gather as Indian people here on the plateau. The Great Columbia River, the Snake River, the Salmon River, all these rivers were the place that our people gathered sustenance. We were told by our elders these rivers were just like the veins and the waters, just like the blood that feeds this land. Our relationship to the land, to the earth, to the rivers are reflected in the beadwork. And even today, the use of modern trade materials that started to come in prior to Lewis and Clark arriving here in 1805, a lot of those things begin to be incorporated into our way of expressing ourselves. My name is Nikia Williamson. My Indian name is Ipalik Hilam Kawat, which means one who gathers the clouds. I grew up here on the Nespris Reservation here in North Central Idaho, surrounded by our traditional homeland and traditional use areas. We placed a great value on our elders all of our knowledge about how to live, how to treat one another is passed down through our grandparents. They did things in a very particular way. Many of these values are reflected in the beadwork, in the corn husk, the horse outfits. Even the, the act of making those things perpetuated that way of life, that understanding. Women in my family have been working with beads clear back from first contact. And it always seems like each generation or every other generation always develop something of their own. My name is Maynard White Owl Lavador, I'm Cayuse, Nespers, and Palouse raised on the Umatilla Indian Reservation.